background. Cars coming from this direction will not affect the quality of your photo. But cars coming this way will. They'll block you, they'll block part of the crossing. So what you want to do is make sure that the traffic is clear coming that direction when you enter the crossing. Cars coming this way will stop, hopefully, so you can get a very good uh, photo with an unblocked view of the crossing. All right? So that's the safest way. Please be careful. I don't like to hear screeching brakes as I'm making my way up the hill. That makes me very nervous. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. If you want to know your quick way back to the underground, that's just right up here. All right, so it's right across the road. Let me get back to the top. And I want to tell you where the... Uh, Site where all the famous recordings were made, most of them. We're really happy to be here live in person. Here's the picture I got today of the member of the uh, Rock Circus. Really happy to have that. So, uh, from me to you, if there's anything that you want, yes, I love you. Happy to be here. And uh, may you all have a very fine day. Today is June 25th. Yeah, June 25th. It's 4.20 in the afternoon. This is in Liverpool. Now, do you want to find Wong? Maybe Wong, two of the most. Houston Station? No, Lime Street Station? My father was a marine engineer on a ship, which meant that he was a long time away from home. I was there. And his ship every two or three months would come sailing in and out of Liverpool. Then he'd be on leave for two or three weeks, I guess. Um, I was so there. a lot of my kind of uh, yeah, I just got back from Buddy Holly. There's a program. It's an excellent show. Uh, Bunch been having a wonderful time. It's approaching the landing down. Kind of, uh, yes, indeed, here I am. I'm about ready to go to bed. The docks and the river. And, uh, I've been having a wonderful the, the time. Which are most I'm going to keep an eye on this program. So this is where I'm kind of landscape to grow up in. It was not like hills and dales oh, you know, or rivers and fields. Albert Dock. The great horizontal plain of water and then urban dockland and huge objects which slithered around. You know. It was only later on when I read Towards New Architecture by Kabuse that I realized he had this fascination for marine ships that I had as a small boy in short trousers. 
I went to school in Liverpool. I went, in retrospect, I think, to a rather progressive no, school. Where, in fact, it was the same yeah, school sequence exactly as... There's a spud. Uh, spud something around here. Here's the... Later, called uh, Mr. Spud. You won't see a whole lot of that uh, going on in America. I, maybe I ought to uh, uh, possibly uh, open up myself a uh, spud factory. I was in fact called and, uh, at 17 and I was in the last two years. That'd be cool. Yeah. It wasn't in traffic with one of those famous British engineers. Now it's there. But the other dock is being made into the Tate Gallery of the north of England, an extension of the Tate Gallery in London. It's built like an Italian piazza, quite uh, formal, around a perfectly formal square. But the uh, square is not for walking in, it's for sailing in, it's for where the ships come in. And around the square you have these colonnades. This is where we will enter the new Tate Gallery, uh, dead center underneath the arch, into this double height reception space with these very elegant uh, cast iron columns and vaulted ceilings. And this will really be the kind of entrance hall. And I guess in here will be held receptions and opening nights. And very fortunately, there's a ledge here for putting your drink on when, you, when the crush is all around. And left and right here are openings through to, will be openings through to the other galleries, where you'll go through to and then up into the floors above. You get a marvelous vista to the end, right to the end of the building, in fact. But what's immediately nice is the change in scale between this uh, entrance hall situation to, the, to a gallery situation where the whole thing comes down in scale. That's where we'd have watercolors and small small pictures. Now we can play in the scale change by taking floors out and have a double height. So we have the possibility of very interesting manipulations with the internal scale. I qualified in 1950 in Liverpool. But, you know, even then I felt that England was shrinking, Britain was shrinking, that while well, places like Liverpool, Manchester, Edinburgh, Glasgow could, in the 19th century, have supported their own orchestras and their own, all their cultural events. I already perceived that England was, was shrinking by the 50s, and I thought everything is going to focus and concentrate. Reels. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you? Do? Am I on, sir? This is my best sight. This, this is, is the 19th century. So how many is in there? There's, well, this is 1916, sir, just for your information. There's a thousand feet of film goes on there, which is between 12 and 15 minutes of projection. You see? He's nodding like, I thank you very much. Yes, I do know it. <laughs> and it goes through here, you see, around here, through the gate and out here, on the take ups. Now, film, you see, is made of something called cellulose nitrate, which is very unstable stuff used in bombs and bullets, which is just the sort of thing you need. Bombs and bullets, you want it to be unstable, you see, so it goes bang, blows people up. But you don't want it in a cinema, so you have to be very careful. You've got this very hot light source here, you see, two carbon rods, 
Now these carbon rods, you see, they're powered by electricity. They burn a bit like an arc weld. You see the arc across? And they make a nice bright light. Because it gets a bit hot and this all stuff blows up. There's only one thing you can do, you know? When the cellulose nitrate film catches fire, do you know what it is? Right. You run for it, sir. Because yeah. you can't put it out. Because it produces its own oxygen, you see? Mm -hmm. So you put it under water, it's bubbles away. You take it out, whoosh, the whole lot goes up. So we've got lots of safety measures, like this take-up sport. It's a real, really old timer. Let me see. This is, what, it's four years old, this? Four. I've got it set, yeah, four years old it is. 1912, it was made, cost me £49. Uh, which is what? Ten weeks' wages? Well, looking at Charles over there, I'd say it takes about 20 weeks' wages. 20 weeks' wages, yes, yes, probably. Yeah, yes. Yes, yes about a lot of money, really. A lot of money to buy that yeah. thing. Well, you see, I'm, I'm slightly out of that. Uh, <laughs> He's just crossed the time continuum. Yes, I've just crossed the time continuum, you see. Because, yes, I, uh, I should be in 1896, you see. 20 years ago, you yeah, 20 years ago, you see. Yeah. Well, I'm one of them 20th century giants. Are you? Oh, 20th century. Well, that's marvelous. Especially written score performed by a full-size symphony orchestra. <laughs> 